Which soybean pre-emerge herbicides will you use on your farm? Well, we're gonna talk about soybean pre options today. Before we do though, I just wanna say this. There are a lot of new technologies, whether it's Liberty Link, Roundup Ready 2 Extend, and people start thinking, you know, even though I've had Roundup Resistance, I can switch over to this other technology. Now I can get away from using a pre. No way, you cannot get away from using a pre if you want top weed control and top yields. Well, when you said which pre-emerge herbicides will you use, my thought was all of them and possibly all of them at the same time. It depends on where you're at, of course. It depends on what, which ones are choices for you. But you're going to need to use multiple soybean pre's, uh, regardless of which system you're in, if you want the best weed control and the best yield. So when you look at pre-emerge herbicides, it's important that you look at the site of action. So you look at what type of weed killer it is and try to pick ones from different families that are all effective on the weeds that you've got. When we look at a resistant weed, like Palmer pigweed, for example, we wanna make sure we have at least two modes of action that are effective on the weed, if not three, if that's possible, in your pre-emerge program. That way we can wipe out most of the Palmer pigweed before it even comes up out of the ground. It's been exciting looking at some of the trail work being done in the south, seeing what just one effective mode of action can do. If we can get 85 or 90% control out of just one site of action, that's good. Now if we can get up to 95% with the second and possibly up to 98, 99% control with that third pre, we've really got a program here that can work for you. All right, 99% isn't good enough for me. I want 99.9 .9, and I'm being dead serious here because just think about any of these tough to control weeds out there. Let's say it's water hamper, palmer pigweed. They can put on a million seeds per plant. If you have a thousand of them that go to seed in your field, how many weeds is that? That's a billion weeds. Is 99% control good enough? No way. So here's what you need. You need three pre-emerge herbicides. And the ones we recommend would be Starting with a yellow, that would be either Trefland, Sonalan, or Prowl. Trefland's the cheapest, but it also has the most carryover and it has to be instantly incorporated. Prowl is the no-till product. The second mode of action I'd use would be Metribuzin. That'd be like the old Sencor. Now you have to take a look at what your soil type is and soil pH, but in a lot of cases we talk about a third of a pound. If you need to reduce your rate because your pH is really high, like over 7.4, or if you have sandy ground, you can certainly do that. The third mode of action would be a PPO. We like to see Authority or Valor. Those products have excellent residual on many of these tough broadleaf weeds. So again, we're talking three pre's in a lot of cases, and right away you might say, oh my goodness, Brian, I'm gonna spend so much money. Uh, no, you're not. Trefland's four bucks, Metribuzin's four bucks, and something like Valor is six bucks, so you got $14. $14, it's r roughly a bushel and a half of soybeans for 99.9% .9 weed control. Sign me up for that. Well, another mode of action that gets talked about a lot in the early pre-emerge market here is the group 15s. So maybe it's a product like Zidua, for example, or Metolachlor. Uh, some of those products are getting used in different pre-mixes early in the season. That's fine, but those products are likely our best option for residual control in season. So like in our first post-emerge pass, you could add in a group 15 in many cases and extend your residual window further into the season. So yes, you could put a group 15 in early, and in some cases, maybe you've got resistance to one of those three sites of action Brian was talking about. Maybe you could insert a group 15 instead of one of those, so you still had three effective sites of action pre. Uh, depending on the rate you're using, you could potentially use a group 15 again post. All right, there are a lot of different pre's out there, a lot of pre-mixes, all that kind of thing. So we really encourage you stick with the three groups that we talked about already, the yellow, the Metribuzin, and the PPO, because those can't be used post-emerge. We've got other things like Darren mentioned a group 15, Dual, Warrant, Zidua, any of those types of products, Outlook, they can be used post. So can Flexstar, so can Pursuit. Uh, there are many different products that can be used post. We like saving the post products for post. Certainly, you can use an authority first. You can use a prefix. You can use something like that down. We just rather go a little bit different direction. And again, we really want to see you use three modes of action pre. Now, let's talk about these new Roundup Ready to Extend beans or Liberty beans. Yep, you've got something that can be effective post emerge. But how many times do you want to spray that? What's it going to cost? How good a control are you actually going to get? How tall are the weeds going to get by the time you spray? All I come back to is 
when you can do it as inexpensively now as you can to put three modes of action down, it's a really good way to go. And if you have to, you could cut back to two, but I'd really like to see you running three modes of action. At least do it on your worst fields. At least get it on the worst acres so you can get that great control there. One other thing that weeds are not resistant to is tillage. So you could absolutely do some tillage out here to supplement what you're doing with your pre-emerge herbicides. So the question may be, do I do the tillage before I put the pre's out or do I use the tillage to incorporate the pre's? Well, in the case of Treflan, that has to be instantly incorporated. So if you're going to do tillage and use Treflan, you could accomplish that all in one pass. Just have your spray nozzles right in front of the tillage tool. That's the best way to go. All right, when we look at Metribuzin or the PPOs, they can be tilled in or not tilled in. And for that matter, there is a yellow uh, prowl that can be used in no-till. So I'm just trying to say, if you look at those three modes of action that we talked about already, you can use them in no-till or you can use them in conventional till. It's just you have to, if you're going to till, keep the Metribuzin and the PPO shallow. If you're going to go no-till, you need to switch away from Treflan or Sonalan and go to prowl. If you've got tough to control weeds, especially Roundup resistant weeds on your farm, and you're going to plant soybeans, the only way to get your maximum yield and maximum weed control is using residual herbicides. It starts with a great pre-emerge program. We recommend using three effective sites of action. The question is, what will stop our Weed of the Week? We'll show you coming up later in the show. <music>